Welcome to SML Total Access, where we break down news, predictions, and more in our Madden League. Now, let's get fired up for SML football. Hello and welcome back to SML Total Access. I'm Primetime Triple Zero, joined by Matt and Dan. What's going on, fellas? It's playoff time in the SML. Let's get lit, The best boys. time of the year. My favorite time for sure. And let's start off first down as the regular season is wrapping up. What surprised you the most in season one? Yeah, you know, for me, there's a couple of things. I think the, I think the, the main thing were the two East divisions. Um, especially, well, actually, I don't even know. I, I don't know if it's the NFC East or the AFC East that surprised me more. But, you know, outside of what? maybe Washington and maybe the Patriots, all those teams are really good and they didn't play that good. I mean, meets meets and uh, uh, meets and woods are the only ones that I think have winning records. The AFC East is all losing records despite all those good teams. Um, and Bean, I thought Bean would be better. Um, I don't think that New England team is as bad as he, as the, as it's made out to be, but he's better than all of those players. Uh, so I I'm really surprised at how bad the East divisions were. I didn't expect them to be, you know, an AFC South type division um, that we pro- that we projected, but I I thought they'd be just a little bit better. Um, and, and honestly, the the only other thing that I'm really surprised about. We haven't really got a patch to this game. Um, it kind of feels weird this late in the season, especially with the NFL having started. We really haven't seen that big patch yet. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised by that. I think that might be because we started a few extra weeks early. That that might be what uh, what you're running into there, Matt. Um, but, hey, my biggest surprise, uh, I'm actually going to go to um, Matt Bomber and the Bears. Um you know, this is a guy last cycle that really just couldn't put it together. I, I don't know what it was, if it was the game, if it was his mindset. I mean, he had a good team. Uh, he just couldn't put it together. And it seems now with a, a lesser quality team, he's put it together. He's back. And, and he's put a he put a, yeah, he put a really good record together. He's playing good ball. Uh he's probably the favorite going into the NFC on the NFC side. And uh I think he's just in a good headspace when it comes to what it takes to win. And so Man, I'm excited to see the Mad Bomber back. And, um, you know, I think uh, that's probably my biggest surprise that it, it's season one with the Bears. And we see what the Bears are doing in the, NFC, in the real NFL. But Bomber is is doing really well with the Bears. Yeah, he is. I've got three quick surprises, actually. My first one, man, AFC South was a cakewalk. It was a cakewalk. And I know Faz went on vacation, but I was 2-0 against Faz. It was easy. And then, uh, you know, I'm just... Anthony Richardson's been fine. Colts are great. I'm going to be the number one seed. I mean, I'm just surprised myself. Um, and then number two, Fins. I know he's just missed out on the playoffs, but he traded Tua. I, it was looking to be just kind of a, a rebuild year. He picked up some draft picks, and he was a, a half a game out maybe of the playoffs. I mean, Fins, watch out season two. Um, and then overall game wise season, or I just want to say I'm surprised by the amount of people complaining about the gameplay. I know there's some things wrong with it, some clipping issues, tackling issues. I still am not convinced that this game is that much worse than last year. It's Madden. And Madden's always been just a sh- a spotty gameplay. I, I just, I, I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I'm just not. I think people tend to complain when they're losing or when they're not as good as they think they should be. And um, and the game's better when people win, and maybe that's my mindset because I'm winning right now. But like, I don't know. I just I just get tired of seeing complaints about the gameplay. Hey, Brian, we don't have all night here, man. We could spend hours about this. Hey, I'm a guy that's winning, and I'll be the first one to complain about it because there are some legitimate things that the gameplay has gone backwards from where we were. Now, could could they add a patch to it? Yeah, and and if they could fix two things, this game would be playing really well. One pass rush. And two, something about the outside speed run pursuit angle. Something of those two things. If they could, could do that, then I'd be right with you. Because I think the quarterback play is really good right now. I think the animations are pretty good. I think the dropouts that they added or the drop, you know, receiver drops are really good. I, I like a lot of the things. The fumbles are really good. Uh, but right now, without a pass rush and the way the running is going, it's just too simple on offense. Yeah, I mean, I get your point, and I just think the the addition of quarterbacks actually struggling outweighs. I get the outside runs, the pursuit angles, and that that I'm not a game designer, but I would think they might be able to tweak that. Um, 
that that difference is so big. I mean, we've asked for years for bad quarterbacks to be bad, and now they are. And now it's kind of brushed under the rug because outside runs are, are apparently OP this year, which they have been all along, it seems like. But I don't know. I, I just don't think the game's as bad when you consider all those factors. But like you said. Yeah, and, and well, my, would... my issue, someone in chat yesterday said um, the game's bad for all of us. And, and that's my thing is – we're all playing the same game. We're all playing the same bad game. We're all playing the same good game, whatever your perspective is. I said it on the last uh, TA or one before that. When someone complains about the game, look at their record. Look, I don't think this is a. I don't think this is a perfect Madden. I don't think there is one. It's not as good as last year. But last year was an anomaly in how good Madden was. I don't. But my issue is like, okay, you can complain it's a bad game, and Dan, I understand your complaints, but you're not saying I lost because this is a bad game. My issue no. is these people that are losing and then saying, oh, this game sucks. That's why I'm losing. We're all playing yeah. the same one here, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm 100 percent with you on that, man. That's a good point. I just would add, though, I, my fear is because bad quarterback play and then OP running, we're going to go back to the people playing punter, not in SML, obviously, but people playing punter at quarterback and just handing the ball off 35 times a game. Yeah. And that's that's a little bit of my fear right now. Yeah. Yeah. Man, 21 was a, a unique kind of breed for sure. Um, moving on now to second down. Who has a chance to make some noise or maybe impact their legacy the most, whether it's an underdog guy or whoever? And, and Dan, we'll start with you. Yeah, I got two guys, and, and I'll hit on them quick because I don't want to steal anyone else's guys. But AFC side, I'm going clink. Uh, this is a guy that I think has always kind of been a good player. But again, same kind of with Bomber last year. He was just kind of always with some bad teams and never got to build them up. Well, now he's got a really good team. The, the Chiefs are kind of loaded for the way this Madden plays. He's got the running back. He's got the quarterback. He's got enough defense that can at least make a stop or two. So I think Clink can actually make a run. Uh, and uh, if he can do that in the AFC with this loaded roster on this side, man, that's that's a, a huge accomplishment, a huge notch on his belt. And then on the NFC, uh, I think Woods is starting to play some really good ball. And I think Woods, uh, with that Eagles defense and the way that they can shut down the run, uh, and then if, if he just plays smart on the offensive side, uh, he has a chance. He has a real chance with the way that the NFC is shaking out uh, that we could see Woods in the NFC championship game potentially going to a Super Bowl. So uh, I got Woods and Clink. Yeah, so on the AFC side for me, it's RD. Um, he, uh, by my counts, he's in the playoffs as the seven seed. Um, maybe he could get up to the six. Um, but, you know, he had a he started out really well. He was he was primes only lost for a while. Um, and he played really well that game, and I don't think it was a fluke, if I recall. I know it was early in the season, um, but then he, you know, he had the the personal emergency and had to leave, and that's why his record is what it is. I know he he has played some games that he should have won, but that's just that's how it is in the SML. But RD is a great player. He's got that team doing really well. He's got Stroud playing really well. I think he's QB of the year. He's got Will Anderson, who I think is the defensive rookie of the year. Um, I don't know how he's pulling that one off. Um, but RD's a good player. And that team, and the only reason he's an underdog is because he's the Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. And if he can beat, you know, you just brought up Clink. I, that's a, I mean, you, if you have Patrick Mahomes in this Madden, you have an advantage over everybody. Um, you know, if he can beat guys like that, dump with that team, Joe Burrow, hats off to RD. Um, and on the NFC side, I'm going to go with straw blacks. Um, just because I, I think we've, we've talked about him a lot and he kind of under underperformed when he came into the league at the end of the last cycle, but it really wasn't his team. And now it is his team and it's a terrible one and kind of similar to RD. It's not a good team, but somehow he's nine and seven and, and he has a force loss in there, I believe recently. So, and he beat me the first week of the season. He's a good player. He's played a lot of guys tough. If he can take that Rams team season one and make a run, and I think he can, that the impact of that, that run would be huge, especially because that team's only going to get better. Yeah, that's good. For me, I'm looking at the AFC, and I'm looking at double rice, no bean. He snuck in, number four seed, won his division at eight and nine, losing record. A bean, Remember, last time we saw him in the SML playoffs, he made the AFC Championship game. He ran from me and hid. But the truth is, he was kind of known to be a choke artist in the playoffs. And, and now he's got some experience under his belt. I think he, he, he's a well-prepared player. I don't think he sits there and studies, but he's in a lot of streams. I think he, he just loves the game of Madden. He practices a lot. He plays a lot. And, and the truth is... I don't think anybody who gets that five seed, which appears to be Clinky or QP, neither of them will be heavily favored against Bean. 
And if he wins one of those games, that'll be that'll be pretty big. Um, over in the NFC side of things, I'm going to go with Woods as well. And, and here's why. I, I announced the other day, and I made an SML breakdown on Woods, and I said he's my next apprentice. Uh, you've seen what I did with Tiny Titan, who's still competing. They said there's going to be a flash in the pan. I gave ti- Tiny lifelong tips, and he is still competing for playoff games now. Uh, but anyway, besides that, Woods, his last three games before week 18, lost to Matt by four, beats Tiny by one, lost to uh, Monty by 21. SML breakdown drops. I start training Woods, beats Tiny by 32. All I'm saying is I'm back back in the saddle coaching. Woods has got a good team. Woods is confident. He's, he's feeling good. Nobody wants to play that Eagles team. Woods has playoff experience, and nobody wants to play Woods round one. I guarantee they don't. I'm watching out for Woods to make, make a run at this thing. Uh, moving on now, third down. Who is most likely to go one and done of the big three in the AFC? You got Dan, you got Prime, you got QP. Three elites in the AFC. Um, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, so as of this recording, I'm just going to go off the way that the standings are now, which would be Prime is the one, uh, Dan is the two, and QP is the three. So if everything stayed as it is, that would put Dan against RD round one and uh, QP against Dump in round one. I think Dan would beat RD. I think that's a bad matchup for RD because Dan can run the ball really well and and uh, RD's 21st against the run in the league. So I, I I think Dan would just literally run him out of the building, unfortunately. I'll, like when he, Dan played me, there's nothing. I don't think RD can stop it. Mm-hmm. I think Dump could beat um, could beat QP, and, I, and I, I don't even think I would be surprised. Uh, QP has some really bad losses on his resume. Um, you know, the Gutta one looks a little bit better because Prime also lost to him, but Gutta's really struggling. Um, mm-hmm. And he's lost to Mike. Uh, he lost to KJ. Um, he really just in those games, he's just looked different, right? I don't know how to put my finger on it. It's just it doesn't look like the dot. You keep waiting for him to make a play, and he just doesn't. And it's it's I don't know. It's like seeing your favorite athlete get old, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I think QP is probably the one. But if you want to talk about who might lose first, it's obviously got to be Prime, right? Because you're the one that would potentially have to play QP if he if if Dan and QP win. I think you would play QP if I'm well. No, you wouldn't. So it'd be Dan and QP that would play each other, and obviously one of them would have to lose. So um, keeping it in the first round, I'm going to go with QP losing to Dump just because Dump's got the team to compete with him, and uh, I don't think that uh, RD can stop Dan's run game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually going to going to pull myself on this one. I think I'm the one most likely to lose, and and here's why: is uh, you look at what the Colts have, they have that superstar player in Jonathan Taylor. Uh, who the the Chargers have. They have that superstar player in Justin Herbert. I just said anyone can play offense, and that's true. Anyone can play offense. But when you're talking about a playoff matchup where it's going to come down to maybe two or three plays, you need one of those X-factor, special players, unique guys that can just do something. And with me losing Najee Harris, I don't I don't have it on the offensive side. And so Huntley can throw a bad pass and ruin me on a third down. Uh, I can't, maybe I won't get that break tackle animation I get with Najee. So uh, I think if, it, if it's RD, I'm going to be pretty much, uh, it's going to be a toss up. I think RD and I kind of play a similar, and I think we're both going to kind of battle it out. I do agree with Matt. I, I have a little advantage on the defensive side, but uh, I think that will be a really good battle. And, and out of the, of the three teams, um, I think there's no doubt that the, the Colts and the Chargers are just better suited to win in the playoffs. Yeah, the Colts not that much just because it's a sorry team, but definitely Chargers for sure. Um, um, but I, I have to agree. I think from a team standpoint, when you look at the big three and how they're how they're built for the playoff, Chargers number one, best team in the playoff. Uh, Chiefs are probably the best team in the playoffs, maybe Bengals. But either way, they're a top team uh, for the big three. It's, it's QP as the best team. He's going to play either double rice, no bean, or dump. So I think QP safe. I think I probably have a healthier team than Dan. Uh, so my team's better right now. And then Dan, like he said, with Najee Harris being out, uh, he's not playing as confident as he was. And um, he, he obviously has a quarterback who's not elite either. Uh, I, I'm going to have to say Dan would be most likely to lose. Uh, but really, I do think that I just – if QP – Rests his stars against um, Clinky, and Clinky beats him. 
and QP gets that five seed. I'm just I'm just gonna call it now. I am nervous for that game. But that just I know seeding people play for seeding and people play for matchups sometimes. I would be very weary on just walking into thinking you're gonna walk into Foxborough and play the Patriots and get a walk away win. I something about Bean right now. I'm I'm just I got it in my gut. And I, I think I think whoever and the AFC West loses that division is gonna might go one and done between Clinky and uh, uh, QP. Honestly, do you guys think spicy, that spicy. that uh, Clink and QP might fight to see who could lose that game? Yeah. Um, it, Clink no. just lost to Dump. Uh, I don't think he no. really wants to play him again. And if I'm looking at, I, I I agree, Double Rice No Bean. This game, you know, the running style that he plays, this fits to him. But if I'm looking at that Bengals team and Joe Burrow, give me Mac Jones every day of the week. So it'll be interesting. Can they? Find a way to out lose each other. I think you're. I think you're honest. Nah, Q, Q's too much of a competitor. Ah. Q's a competitor. He will never do that. If let me tell you that. If so, are you are Dan? Are you saying uh, Justin Herbert will or won't play this week? He will. You He'll just, play. I don't think he will. 100%. I, th- I don't think he's going to play. I think he's going to after one drive. I think he's going to bench him. We'll see. I'll we'll- be disappointed, but division winning the division matters. I don't care what you say about week eighteen injuries play play in fear you, you, you want to go win your division go win your division i think herbert is in line for a dev bump so that could uh that could make him want to do it he's third in passing yards yeah and i think he's first in tds it'll be, we'll, it'll be interesting it'll be interesting um moving on now spread the love guys who are you spreading your love on yeah i think uh i think this one to me was a no-brainer i think with the news we got here in the last 24 hours uh, i i gotta spread my love out to faz i mean uh, I remember when this uh, young whippersnapper came up in one of my leagues and he thought he was all this big hot shot and I just kind of smacked him around uh, left and right in the playoffs. He could have no answers whatsoever. He wasn't even close. And then I uh, told him about the SML and he started getting the SML and then, uh, you know, he, he's just, just put on a show. He's been a good competitor. He's won seven titles. Uh, he's beat me several times in some big matchups. We had some great battles. So uh, I'm hoping this isn't a, a farewell, goodbye. I'm hoping this is just a pause, and hopefully we'll get them back in there. But, uh, Faz, I know you'll be listening. I know you'll be catching in on the content. So I uh, appreciate your brother. hope you get well and, uh, you know, uh, look forward to many battles down the road. Mm. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my love with uh, Tiny. Um, ah, just kidding. I'm not. Uh, so <laughs> I, was gonna, I was going kind of the same. I was going to go like the same, the same avenue, but I was going to share it with DW. Uh, happy to see him back. Obviously, maybe not the circumstances that we all wanted, but um, I am happy to see DW back. He's always been a very positive influence in this league um, and uh, active in chat and all that kind of stuff. Just a great guy. And uh, obviously, at the very first meetup, if you were there, you met him, and he's exactly like you would imagine. Yeah. Uh, the guy would give you the shirt off of his back. So I'm happy to have DW here. Um, and then I'm also going to go over to uh, my division here, and I'm going to go with Straw Blacks, uh, you know, just kind of for a similar reason. Uh, you know, we, we talk, we open the show with uh, people talking about this game sucks, and I, I just, with Straw, I just don't see it. I mean, maybe maybe he says it in chat and I just miss it, but I've played him twice. It's always GG's, man. It's never, you know, you, oh, you got this lucky break, or oh, I wish this would have happened, you know, or Stafford sucks or whatever, you know, he's just... He's just always a positive guy when he's on the countdown, man. The guy's just always, oh, he's always smiling every single time he, he's on that show, whether he's talking or not, he's smiling. Um, so I don't know. I, I love the positivity that he brings and he's doing really well with that Rams team. <laughs> it's kind of scary for me because it's only going to get better. I need Aaron Donald to retire quick um, to, to really um, level that out. But uh, Straw, I appreciate being in your division. You're a good guy and uh, your positivity, it's noticed. Yeah, I think that's good for Stra- and for Faz. First of all, Faz, what a what a member uh, in the SML, and, and I certainly hope that that's not the end. Um, and I, I don't think it will be. I just I hope it, I hope it's not. Uh, and Straw, obviously, the positivity the guy brings. You know who he reminds me of is a uh, uh, Twitch from Ellen DeGeneres. Now, uh, <laughs> Twitch ended up killing himself, but uh, hopefully Straw doesn't do that. But he's a <laughs> <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> good golly! But, uh, <laughs> he's a he's a good member. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to spread my love to uh, to Bomber. Honestly, and, and Dan hit on it earlier. <laughs> Bomber, after last cycle, it seemed like he was just down for months on end, and he was depressed and mad and hating mad and he'd play other games. 
he's come back, and this Bears team is not good. And he's focused. He's playing with Justin Fields, who's not a great player, not a great quarterback, and I know the feeling. Um, and he's winning games, and he's not really he, – he's not – I mean, he's just happy, and he's just content. And he probably knows that odds are it's going to be really tough to win a Super Bowl this season with that Bears team, but he's still playing his games, and he's knocking them out, and he's making content. The league is better when Mad Bomber is is uh, kind of a top dog. And, and right now, I think he's kind of back in the saddle again, uh, like uh, Steven Tyler would say. But uh, let's, let's get off that topic after my little uh, comment there. And uh, Matt, what's your, what's your five? Uh, I love it. I've had to gather myself there. Um, but uh, top five going into the playoffs, you know, this is an exciting time in the uh, SML. So um, we got our top five here, but you can bet if you're not on it, everyone that's uh, in the playoffs is looking to to dethrone these guys. At number five, I've got Bomber. We spent a lot of time talking about him. He is on one heck of a run. And honestly, for the most part, his losses aren't even all that bad. Uh, you know, he's got the loss to Clink. He's got the loss to QP. Um and he's got the loss, the loss to Monty, who, you know, he's hot and cold. And he, when he's hot, he's really hot. And when he's cold, he's really cold. Um, but I think if a lot of people played Clink and, and, and QP, they would have those losses, too. So I've got Bomber there. At number four, I've got Clink. Um, the guy just keeps winning. I mean, he was in line for the one seed, potentially, until yeah. the hiccup against Dump. And I can't really fault him for losing to the Bengals. I mean, it's just this Madden, if you have the team and or the quarterback, you you can really put the pressure on people uh, and they can't really respond. Um, mm-hmm. At number three, I've got QP. Again, I, I know I talked about uh, maybe watching your favorite athlete get old and, and I have kind of, I just, I don't see that dominance from QP that I'm used to seeing, you know, where it's just like, okay, he's down to KJ, but you know, it's a, it's the second quarter and he's going to blow him out. Well, it just starts to become the third and the fourth quarter and he's just not pulling away. And, you know, he loses to his brother. I know he had a bad call in the back of the end zone, but I, I'm just I'm missing that extra step. But it's playoff time. And, and like Dan said, QP is a competitor. I think he'll figure it out. He's got a new playbook, he said. So we'll see how that goes. At number two, I've got Dan. Hey, keeps on trucking. Um, literally trucked me for about 200 yards when we played. I just couldn't stop the run. Uh, he's the thing with Dan is he's got an identity, right? And when you have a guy who has an identity and knows what he wants to do, that's always tough to beat because you, you can't really rattle him um, unless you're prime. Um, who I've got at number one, who did rattle Dan. And Dan looked tentative to pass when he played the Colts. It looked like Prime had all the answers to to the test. Um, but then the hiccup, the hiccup against um, against the Raiders, and I and I think this is where it gets scary for guys like Dan and Prime. Uh, and bomber even where you don't have that quarterback. If your quarterback is off, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, if Anthony Richardson wants to sail a wide open streak route and it goes right to the safety, there's nothing you as good as you guys are. There's nothing you can do about it. And I think that's what scares me. But at this point, primes beat them all. And uh, he's number one. Yeah. No, good I, list, Matt. Good list. Good I agree. List. I agree with that. It's a fair list. Uh, it's a fair list. Uh, yeah, it's exciting because there's no real, uh, you can't say there's a true pull away member. Um, nobody's really submitted themselves as a top dog, and I think anybody can be beat for a variety of reasons. Whether they have a super team and they're not playing well, or if they're really good and they just don't have a great team, I think the playoffs are a little more unpredictable this year, and it's it's really going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it's season one. I mean, anything can happen. Meets made a Super Bowl season one. Anything can happen. So, well, guys, that is SML Total Access. We appreciate you guys listening, and hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day.